Hey everyone, Charles here. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I've got a hands-on lab exercise for you to try out. We're going to look at configuring mutual route redistribution between OSPF and EIGRP. In the video description below, I've included a free downloadable packet tracer topology that's already pre-built with a base configuration in place so you can get up and going quickly. I'll explain everything at the beginning of this video and set up the lab tasks and then give you a chance to try that out for yourself before I show you the solution. Let's jump in and take a look. I've chosen to build this lab using Packet Tracer, which is Cisco's free simulation tool that they provide. Now, Packet Tracer certainly does have its limitations, but you can also perform a lot of exam preparation and a lot of great practice with this tool. And again, it's completely free. So if you don't already have that, I've provided a link in the description below where you can get that from Cisco. Additionally, I've provided a download link to my pre-built lab that I'm using in this video. And that's going to include a base configuration that's already in place on all of our devices. If you download that and open it with your own version of Packet Tracer, this is what you're going to see. I'll also note that packet tracer files are not backwards compatible. This particular lab was created in version 7.3, which is an older version that I have on my system. So you'll need that version or a newer version in order to open this lab. So for some reason, if you can't open the lab, make sure you're running at least version 7.3. And if not, you'll need to update that. Now, as I've already said, I've configured much of the lab here already. You can see a note here in Packet Tracer listing all of the interface IP address assignments for our routers. And you'll also see that we have an OSPF and an EIGRP portion of the network. R2, which is in the middle of those, that participates in both OSPF and EIGRP. Router 1 is in the OSPF area, while Router 3 is in the EIGRP autonomous system. Let's jump onto router two here and let's say show IP route to take a look at what we currently have in place. When I do that, you'll notice that router two does have awareness of all of the routes in this network. We see the route connecting over to R1, which is 12.12.12.0 slash 24. We see the network also that connects over to R3 as well, which is 23.23.23.0 slash 24. We additionally see the connected networks on both R1 and R3. In other words, we see the networks getting us to switch one, switch two, switch three, and switch four. If I say show IP OSPF neighbor, you'll see that we have a single OSPF neighbor, which is of course router one at the address 12.12.12.1. If I say show IP EIGRP neighbors, you'll see that likewise, we have a single EIGRP neighbor at 23.23.23.1, which is of course router three. If we go to R1 and we say show IP route, you'll see our local IP routing table. And that lets us know that we know about routes going to switch one and switch two. And we also know about the routes going to R2. So in other words, we only know about our OSPF routes. We don't know about any of those EIGRP routes. If we jump onto router three, and say the same thing, show IP route, we're gonna see a similar story over here. We see the networks going to switch three and switch four. We see the route going to R2 in the middle. So we are only seeing EIGRP routes. So what we want to do in this lab is we wanna configure mutual route redistribution. We want OSPF and EIGRP to advertise routes that they know about into one another. Now, since router two has one interface participating in OSPF, one interface participating in EIGRP, that means router two is where we want to perform the mutual route redistribution. That's where all of the configuration is going to take place. So as you perform this lab on your own, you wanna make sure that when everything is configured, you should be able to go to router one and you should be able to see all of the EIGRP routes in the IP routing table and also, on R3, you wanna be able to see all of the OSPF routes in that local IP routing table. So if you wanna do that on your own, if you wanna try that out, go ahead and download the packet tracer file that's in the video description. Give that a try for yourself and I would encourage you to do that. You can pause this video right here. You can give that a try on your own. Then you can resume the video to see the solution. Otherwise, feel free to just stick around and watch as I show you how to configure that. All right, we're performing mutual route redistribution 
on router two. So let's connect here into this router. And we'll clear off a little space for us. And let's first go under global configuration mode and let's say router OSPF process ID one. That is our local OSPF process ID that we're using. And the command that we want to use is redistribute EIGRP autonomous system number one. Very simple command to perform. Now notice the warning that we have here. It states that only classful networks are going to be redistributed. In recent versions of Cisco IOS, that option is going to be automatically added to the command configuration by default, even if we don't specify that. And I'll actually show you my running configuration in just a bit. If you're having an issue with redistribution and you're using an older iOS version, that's definitely something you'll want to add to your configuration command. In Packet Tracer, that is also the case. So we need to actually add this option in here. And in fact, if we go ahead and say, do show run, pipe to section router OSPF, you'll see our redistribute EIGRP one command in our configuration. Again, if we were using a more recent version of iOS, or if we were using actual physical equipment or even an emulator such as CML, that would automatically be added. In our case, we actually need to correct that. So I'm going to arrow up to that original command. And at the end of that, I want to add the keyword subnets. That's going to ensure that we redistribute classful and classless networks. So I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to arrow up and again, run that show command. And this time you'll see in our configuration, the subnets keyword is in place. So that's good. Now let's do the same for EIGRP as well. So let's say router EIGRP autonomous system number one. So we are under our EIGRP configuration mode. Now let's say redistribute OSPF process ID one. So that's all in place. Let's go ahead and start taking a look at our IP routing tables. Let's first jump over to router one and let's say show IP route. And we do see some new information in this routing table. We see the 30.0.0.0 slash 24 network. And we see the 40.0.0.0 slash 24 network. We also see the 23.23.23.0 network. Now the 30 network and the 40 network are of course related to switch three and switch four. You'll notice that these have a code of O at the beginning. And if I scroll up just a bit, you'll see that this O code lets us know this was learned via OSPF. And additionally, we see the status code E2. And if we reference our code table, we'll see that this is an OSPF external type two route, which is exactly what we would expect to see from routes being redistributed into OSPF. So that's great. Now let's go to R3 and let me clear off a little bit of space for us. We'll say show IP route. And you'll notice that our IP routing table looks the same. We don't have any new routes in here. Why is that? Well, that's because I did not specify the EIGRP seed metric when I configured this. By default, when we redistribute OSPF into EIGRP, the default seed metric is going to be set to infinity, which means that these routes will appear to be unreachable. In order to resolve this problem, we need to configure a seed metric for routes being redistributed into EIGRP. So in order to do that, let's go back to router two, where we performed our redistribution. And there are a few ways we can do this. We can set a default metric for all routes being redistributed. We can specify the metrics when we enter the redistribution command that we already configured, or we can do that with a route map. All three of those are valid options. In my case, I'm just going to re-enter the redistribute command that I used previously on router two. By the way, if you're not familiar with how metrics play into route redistribution, you can check out my video on that, which explains this topic more in depth. I'll also link that in the video description below as well. And we're going to start out with the same command that we used previously, which is redistribute OSPF one. But this time let's look at context sensitive help. One of the options that we have is metric. And if we continue to look at context sensitive help, that's going to display each component of the metric configuration that we need to specify. So first up, we have the bandwidth. I am using gigabit links here, and this will be set in kilobits per second, as you can see in our contextual help output. So I need to say 1 million kilobits per second, one 
followed by six zeros. Next, you can see is our delay in tens of microseconds. I'm gonna set this to one, meaning that we have a 10 microsecond delay. Next is our reliability, where 255 is 100% reliable. So I will say 255. Next is going to be our load, where 255 is 100% loaded. So I'm going to configure this as a one, meaning that we have a minimal load. And finally, we're gonna have the MTU, which is used as a tiebreaker. I'll set that to the default value of 1500 bytes. So that's all in place. Let's go back to router three and let's once again, I'm gonna arrow up and say show IP route. And this time you'll see that I do have some new information in my local IP routing table. We see the D code listed here at the beginning. If I scroll up a bit, that tells us this was learned by EIGRP. We also see EX letting us know that this was learned via EIGRP external. In other words, this was redistributed. And of course, those are for the 12.12.12.0 network, which connects R1 and R2. And we see the networks likewise for switch one and switch two listed in here, as we would expect to see. So now we've configured mutual route redistribution and all of our routers have mutual knowledge of every single route in this topology. That's all for now. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider subscribing, leaving a comment, or sharing this video with someone you think may enjoy it. That's the best way you can support what I'm doing. If you'd like to support the content I'm creating even more, please consider checking out the membership links found in the video description. I hope you found this content useful, and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.